Okie dokie, welcome, uh, welcome friends. Uh, my name is Ben Price, I'm in San Antonio. I want to talk to you today about the uh, 145 musical system, primarily aimed at guitarists, but what I'm going to say applies to, uh, to everyone. Uh, I presume that you're, uh, you know, you're a guitar player and you're at some level, you're kind of all right there. Perhaps you're playing in a garage band or maybe you're playing out and you run across this uh, 145 thing and uh, if, you, if you're comfortable with it, that's great. If not, then we're going to talk about what it means and why it means what it means. So it's kind of important for you to grasp this kind of the fundamentals. This will just be about a five minute, about a five minute video. So uh, here you are, you're playing out on stage and in your band you have a set list and in your set list it says, oh, we're going to, I play a lot of country music, so we're going, to, we're going to play a George Strait song and it's in the key of Amarillo by Morning. It's in the key of D. So in your band, you happen to know that uh, the chord pattern is D and whatever comes after that. Let's say though that you're playing out at a club one evening and you have open mic and you say, okay, we have open mic thing. Anyone who wants to get up and sing a song, you know, come on up and let's, uh, let's do that. So uh, sure enough, Billy and Susie come up and they want to sing a song. You say, great, what song are you going to sing? And they say, well, we're going to do Amber. I'm going to do Amarillo by morning. And you ask Billy, so Billy, what key do you sing his song in? And if he's a musician, he'll know. He'll tell you, oh, I do it in E or G or whatever. But occasionally you run into people who uh, don't uh, know. And then you say, well, sing a little bit and I'll find you on the guitar here. So they start singing. Sure enough, you find them. And they're invariably in some key like F sharp or whatever. So, uh, and I know what you're thinking. Hey, move them from F sharp to G or move them from E flat to E. And that's okay too. However, we're going to talk about what it means to... Uh, you know, accommodate the singer in those in those situations where you need to make a quick transposition of a uh, of a song, uh, kind of on the fly. And that's that's kind of the basis of this one four five thing. So I have a diagram back here. I hope you can see this. I really just kind of made a fretboard that kind of corresponds to a uh, to a guitar uh, fretboard. And if you can imagine that that the first fret here might be the nut on the guitar. And then the, the first fret is first line, second line, second fret, and so forth, on up to, uh, to the top. I've got a few more lines than what you'll, what you'll have frets, but I, I did that for a reason. So this really corresponds to your fretboard. Um, it, it so happens that the distance between every one of these frets is called a half step. That's important. Remember that, a half step. So the distance between the, the nut and first fret is a half step. The distance between the eighth fret and the ninth fret is a half step musically and so forth. So all these are half steps. All right, so let's talk about uh, a major scale. I know I'm getting off a little bit on the one, four, five, but we'll be, be back to that right away. So on the, uh, on the major scale, how do you know if you're uh, uh, playing a major scale, what notes, are, what notes are in there? Well, it's kind of simple. There's a formula. And the formula for this, uh, this major scale, which I have right here, is it looks like this. And I can line this up with any of these frets I have. And the formula is start, starting at a particular fret, any fret you want. The first uh, note will be two half steps up from that. The next note in the major scale will be two half steps up, then one half step up for the next note, and two, 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 one. So here's the formula. Two, two, one, two, 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 one. You can make one of these little things, which makes, uh, makes life a lot easier to understand. So if I'm starting in some key, any key I want, I know that the, uh, the major scale will be comp composed, comprised of the notes that will be defined by this two steps, two steps, one step, two, 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 and one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, that, that's great. Let's, uh, let's, put that to, let's put that to use. Through the magic of uh, scissors and masking tape, or, or, or a scotch tape, uh, I have... Uh, I have made a, uh, uh, put the, some, some uh, identifiers on the, on the fretboard here. And I've stopped at E because that's the, uh, the first, that's the nut on, on the guitar. And uh, for right now, we're only really talking about the top, the little tiny string. Could use the bottom string, but we're only talking about the top string. So this is going to kind of correspond to your, your top string. So if I wanted to know what notes were in the, uh, the key of G, like golf, I could line up my handy dandy chart here starting at G, put this right under the G thing, and then it tells me that, hey, the notes in the key of G are G, the next one is two half steps up, which is A, two half steps up, B, and you can probably see the rest. So G, A, B, C, D, E, and then F sharp, this one, and then G. So that's, that's the key of G. 
The beauty of this thing is you can kind of slide it anywhere you want. So if you say, well, we're going to play in the key of E, you can slide this down to E and, and uh, you know, that gives you the, that gives you the, the notes of the major scale, any major scale, as long as you start with the little tick mark here, it will tell you what the notes are in a major scale. It's E and then F sharp, two up, G sharp, and, and so forth. So that's great. So this will tell you how to define a major scale, any one you want. I've left a little room because I can go down here to C. This is a C and we could, we could do another, another scale. But for the moment, I think that gives, you, that gives you a pretty good idea. So let's take that information, which is the, the, the rule, the formula, two, two, one, two, 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 one. These are half steps, two half steps, two half steps, one. Let's take that formula and apply that to the one, four, five thing. Uh, now we're getting somewhere. Here we go. If we start on any, uh, any chord, so we'll just start right here. By, uh, by definition, that chord is called the root, and it says, it looks like R8T, it really should be R-O-O-T, that's the root. Some people call it the dominant, and if you're talking to musicians, some of them will have different uh, terminology for what we're saying, but it, it, that not so significant. What's significant is you kind of get the grasp of how these things relate to each other, because they're all the same, they're all the same. By the way, that pattern we were talking about for the major scale, there's another pattern that would be for the minor scale. There's a couple different flavors of minor scales, but uh, the concept that there's a pattern and it fits throughout the entire thing would, is works. And by the way, if you're a piano player or, or whatever you play, same thing. It's always, this, this major scale pattern is always the same. So here's our one, four, five thing. If we're playing in the key of G, the root would be the G. So we're going to line up our root thing here at G. And it tells us that the fourth note in the scale of G is G A B C. So the first note, see this first note, second note, third note, and fourth note in the major scale. In the major scale, first note, second note, third note, and fourth note. So that's called the four, and you can you'll, sometimes you'll see it in Roman numerals or four. And then the five is the fifth note in the major scale. Remember, in the major scale. So if we're playing in the key of G, we're playing uh, Cowboy Rides Away, a George Strait song, uh, you know, you, and the person says, I'm playing in the key of G, you know already that it's going to be, uh, the chords are going to be G, and it's going to be another chord for C and a chord for D. And most of you probably already know that. And, oh, and by the way, frequently there is a second chord in a lot of songs, which would be the, if this is the first chord, the first note, the second chord would be this, and it's usually a minor, so it would be a G, a minor, C, and D in the key of, uh, in the key of G. Okie dokie. So let's go back to our, uh, I have trouble holding that up there. Our original question was, hey, Billy's on the stage and he says, I'm going to do uh, Amaro by morning. And you, you find out that he's in the key of F sharp. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Well, you're probably not going to take this with you on stage. But uh, if we line this up, we would see that Billy is going to start singing in F sharp. And where you would normally change to, you know, if you're playing in G, where you normally change to C, you're going to change to a B. That's the fourth. So here's the root. The fourth is a B. And then the fifth is a C sharp. So happens in the Amarillo by morning, there is a, uh, there's another, another minor chord in there, which is a, a B, be a B flat minor for that particular song. Don't worry about that. So here's the, here's the concept. The one, four, five allows you, if you're kind of familiar with the system, that someone can come up to you on stage and say, Susie comes up and says, hey, how's it going, guy? Great, Susie, what are you going to sing for us today? And she says, I'm going to sing an original song. And terror strikes your heart because you have no idea what the chord pattern is uh, for Susie. But Susie tells you it's in the same tempo as uh, Cowboy Rides Away, and I'll give you the signs for the one, four, five. Oh, wouldn't that be great if Susie could do that? So let's say that that's, that's what Susie's going to do. She's going to say, just, we're going to just start the song, and I'll do a one, and I'll, I'll tell you when right before we're going to change to a four and change to a five, and that, that might be the two minor if, if she has one. If that's the case, you're all set, because you know that if you're starting in, uh, if you're starting in some key and she says she's going to play in the key of uh, F, there, there's your, your root. You know the fourth chord is a B-flat. The fifth chord is a C. And by the way, you kind of have to just sort of memorize these at some point. You have to sort of figure them out. But this, this uh, little diagram will kind of help you get the relationship and how you can slide this up and down. That's probably the key is the root, 
note or the first, the one chord, is whatever key you're playing in. So if you're playing in the key of G, that's the one. That's called the one. If you're playing in the key of A, A is now the one, one chord. The fourth chord would be the D and, and the fifth is the E. So this thing kind of slides up and down. That's probably the important thing. So when someone says uh, they're going to play, uh, they're going to do a one, four, five, and they're telling you uh, we're in the key of uh, C, and you're and the last person that got up was playing in a key of G, and they told you one, four, five, and you're thinking, hey, the G is the one. Well, it isn't. It only because if you're in that key. If the next person gets up and they're singing in the key of C, well, C is now the one chord. The one, and then the four would be the F, and the five would be the G. So that's what we got. I hope that uh, clarifies it for you. If you have questions, by all means, post them, uh, post them below, and I'll see if I can't respond to that. So I hope you, hope you enjoyed this, and good luck. Keep practicing.